Yes, in the spirit of youth in politics, it is good for us to venture into those who are passionate about developing our country. So before, without further ado, because Arnold, now we already know you, can everybody else please introduce themselves? Thank you so much. I'm not new in the house. Mm -hmm. I'm Benjamin Diema Kiruiridi from the Catholic University of Eastern Africa. I'm the chairperson, Youth and Governance Initiative, Transfer County Chapter and the president, Trusa, famously known as North East, Northwest uh, Rift Student Association. I'm glad to be here. Thank Asante you. Asante sana. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Winfred Mwangi is my name. I'm a student at the University of Nairobi. I'm also the secretary at the Champions for SDGs. And I'm glad to be here. All right. Good morning. Good morning. I am Diane and Jerry, mm -hmm. and I'm a student at Multimedia University of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I'm glad to be here. Oh, Asante Sana. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Kevin Strandiek. I'm actually a communications consultant. I play multiple sector roles in that uh, I look at uh, uh, the possibility of uh, really ensuring SDGs are implemented mm -hmm. needs to cut across sectors and I'm passionate about uh, education, uh, health, infrastructure and actually clean water and sanitation and mm -hmm. it's a pleasure being around. Thank you. All right. Hi. Hello. My name is Isaac Kiego and I am a social media strategist. I am also a student at JQuart current campus. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Leo Wayaki. A medical student, Kenya Medical Training College, current campus, passionate about good health and well-being. Thank right. you for having me. Well, we are, we are really glad to have you. Anyway, so in the spirit of the Big Four Agenda, which is the affordable housing, you know, food security, universal health care, you know, infrastructure development, please do. We do have a big breakdown of the 17 SDGs, which are the Global Sustainable Development Goals that we have for this uh, particular <coughs> country which you can break down in the speed of those four. So um, Heshimiwa from uh, N NYC, you're mm. very passionate about number two, yes. zero hunger. Yes. Why? Well, uh, as an av advocate of young people, and uh, <laughs> we are all aware that the, pop the bigger population of this country are young people. And when we talk about young people, we are talking about young parents and uh, young fathers of this nation. And so my worry, uh, my worry as a young person, when I wake up in the morning, that be in a position to feed my family. And so if you wake up and you're clueless of where you're going next, where you're going to get your meal, that, is, that should worry you. Mm -hmm. And that should worry us as a nation. Mm -hmm. And that is why I would want to see Kenyan, especially the young population, being in a position to be able to provide for their family. And this providing for their family is merely to be able to put food on the table. And that is our concern as young people. And that is why I'm very passionate about this. Uh, at the SGD, we, we have committed ourselves as a nation and contributing to what we call the, the SDG. We, ours was adopted in 2016. Mm -hmm. And when we adopted that, we also agree that this is a world concern and a concern for us. Mm -hmm. And we've also localized that as a priority for us. Mm -hmm. You see that we have 17 goals, mm -hmm. but Kenya in its own right mm -hmm. decided that uh, this number two will also be part of our priority. Mm -hmm. And that is why I think we, we need to just do much more than just having it part of uh, our priority mm -hmm. and not doing enough to ensure that Kenyans and its citizens are able to put food on their table. Okay. So how are we going to put food on the table? Can we talk about that then? So I think um, it is very important that uh, institutions in our country start uh, practicing uh, good governance and also accountability because those, those two are the fundamental principles of strong institutions. Mm -hmm. And when institutions in our country are strong, we'll be able to achieve things like good health and well-being. Our facilities will be able to provide quality healthcare services to their populations. Um, young people will be able to access education, quality and affordable education. There will be gender balance in aspects of opportunities and uh, things that young people can take part in. And there will uh, they'll also be decent work and economic growth. All right. Kevin? Uh -huh. uh, this SDG is actually the one of the most important goals 
we having in our country, having been brought, broken down into four famously as the, as the big four agenda. Mm -hmm. I wish to say this, you know, as a country, you said you're tackling zero hunger. As a country, we are, it's like Kenya is drowning. Like the case of recently, you're aware that the MPs, they are now digging down deep into our pockets with the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. They want our money to pay their rents. And you know, these are a group of people who are guzzling rivers of vodka every weekend, courtesy of our accounts, yet the local Manainchi in town is suffering, yet you expect that the whole country should be in a position to provide for themselves. We need to do something as advocates of the SDGs. We need to do something good to save our country. It's okay. Um, thank you for the question. So uh, if you're discussing zero hunger, mm -hmm. I think our focus as a country should divert to food security. Mm -hmm. How food secures Kenya? Mm -hmm. I think we are at a very alarming rate, mm -hmm. considering the recent cases of uh, people dying out of hunger. Mm -hmm. I think the, the, um, the setup, the system that is set up in feeding our nation is failing, mm -hmm. because we are focused really on exports of um, non-food items, mm -hmm. while our focus should actually be food. Like we need to first feed our nation before feeding the next nation. Kenya, 15 years ago, we used to have maize, like mm -hmm. it was a staple food. Mm -hmm. We had maize all over. Mm -hmm. But now it's alarming that we're actually importing maize from Uganda. Mm. So I think we need to implement systems that will support the farmer to mm -hmm. actually provide to the community mm -hmm. itself mm -hmm. so that at least every other Kenyan is food secure every other day. Fantastic. Thank you. Kevin, you really had something to say. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, probably on the, the zero anger perspective, mm -hmm. I look at it not uh, from uh, the negative trends that have happened, mm -hmm. but probably what we need to do to uh, to just uh, champion zero hunger. Mm -hmm. And my perspective is, uh, you see, right now there's the issue of uh, uh, we're not sure when the rains take place. There's so much change towards climate change. Mm -hmm. And uh, my proposition will be, uh, why can we not put so much focus on uh, value chain? Because uh, it's been raining right now, yes? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been raining, so there's going to be like excessive production of uh, skuma wiki, for example. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, my really uh, wish, a desire from our policy advocacy bit, mm -hmm. and I'll kind of package this with TVET, mm -hmm. the technical vocational and uh, um, education training, mm -hmm. in that can we just really push uh, the essence of how can we enhance value chains in our croppings, in that when we're producing excess, how can we convert this excess to last for a period of uh, like uh, six months, in that uh, cows take vegetables. Mm -hmm. So could there be a possibility of uh, processing that excess vegetables into powder mm -hmm. so that probably when uh, we don't have rains, uh, we'll kind of have powder which cows or rather our lives are going to take. Mm -hmm. So my perspective on zero hunger as we are right now is uh, from a point of uh, how can we escalate our infrastructure to champion, uh, uh, to champion the bit of uh, value chain within uh, our production bit. And probably that's what I wanted to emphasize when it comes to the zero hunger perspective. Mom. Probably, right. maybe if someone can start. Okay, thank you to add on what my fellow colleague has said. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think as a nation to tackle the issue of zero hunger, mm -hmm. we need to do something we call diversification. Mm -hmm. So, as he has said, let's take for example, there are two things we have here. There is a cow which can consume a vegetable, right? Mm -hmm. So, we need to diversify in a certain way that we ensure people not only concentrate on a specific food in certain regions. Yeah, thank you. I think I'll add on what you said also. Mine goes to climate action. What are we doing about our climate changes? Right now we have SDG the number 13. Can yes. you say which one it is? <coughs> right now we are having the rains. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we are not prepared for the floods. Mm -hmm. We'll have so many, we'll have so much water going to waste, mm -hmm. yet some, some few months to come, we'll be borrowing food aid from, from countries abroad. Mm -hmm. We need to curb the climate change, we need to curb the SDG number 13 mm -hmm. so that we can be sure that SDG number two mm -hmm. will be a success. Ah, 
Fantastic. Jennifer, do you have anything to say to us? Because I know you're waiting for SDG number. Where is it? 16. Number 16. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, okay, so uh, first, um, yes, a brief background on SDGs. So SDGs, as mm -hmm. Arnold had stated, picked up from the MDGs, which were the Millen Millennium Development Goals. Yes. And we failed to achieve a majority of them. And that's, what, that's one thing as... As, as a global community, we fail to actually uh, state and acknowledge that we failed to achieve our MDGs before we even moved to the SDGs. Mm -hmm. Then we ended up adopting a whole set of 17 goals, mm -hmm. and they're also broken down to mm. further targets. Mm. So if you read in depth, you'll see that there are further targets. Each goal has from six all the way to 19. Mm -hmm. 19 is uh, goal number 17, which is... Uh, uh, partnerships. Yes, partnerships, mm -hmm. which has 19 targets. Mm -hmm. uh, each target also have indicators mm -hmm. to indicate um, how each country is performing in terms of achievement. So mm -hmm. this um, development blueprint really harmonizes uh, development strategies mm -hmm. for countries all over the world. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, as you have stated, um, I'm kind of um, a peace strong institutions kind of person because mm -hmm. of my background. Mm -hmm. Now, um, this peace, justice, and strong institutions is a ring, sort mm -hmm. of a golden ring that mm -hmm. also harmonizes all the other uh, 16 goals that are involved. Because without strong institutions, you cannot um, deal with climate change. Without strong institutions, you cannot deal with goal number 10, which are inequalities mm -hmm. that are, you know, are seen within uh, various classes in, in, in developing countries. Mm -hmm. So that aspect of peace, justice, and strong institutions needs to be harnessed. Mm -hmm. Now, bring, bringing that back home, mm -hmm. um, there's need to implement the constitution. Now, our 2010 constitution mm -hmm. brought forth um, hope for Kenyans that mm -hmm. this country can be transformed, that they, there can be hope for um, good governance for once. Mm -hmm. And uh, the constitution also introduced various institutions that were not there in the 1969 constitution. Mm -hmm. So we have checker mechanisms, we have uh, the rule of law, we have... Um, what I call probably could be, which could be the fourth arm of the the form of, uh, fourth arm of government. Mm -hmm. We have the constitutional commissions, mm -hmm. which are listed in Chapter 15. Mm -hmm. There's so much hope in that constitution that which Kenyans said yes to. Mm -hmm. And if we implement that, I believe we can have strong institutions. And regardless of the leadership at the top, mm -hmm. then we'll be able to actually ensure that the the spirit of the constitution is implemented. Mm -hmm. And if we implement that. All of these goals, from goal 1 to 17, all mm -hmm. of them are enumerated in our constitution in one way or another. Mm -hmm. Social economic rights, Article 43, mm -hmm. they cover inequalities. Mm -hmm. um, when we talk about uh, climate change, there's, there's a whole chapter about climate change. So there's, there's so much. Mm -hmm. So I believe that um, our constitution is harmonized within uh, the 17 goals. And also, of course, we have uh, different... Uh, we have different also development blueprints from mm -hmm. the Vision 2030 mm -hmm. to what you've just mentioned, the Big Four Agenda. Mm -hmm. And we'll, the government also went ahead to actually institutionalize a committee to, in, to check mm -hmm. the implementation of the goals mm -hmm. in 2016. Mm -hmm. So there's so much being done. Mm -hmm. But um, the realization of these goals can only be seen when you implement the constitution. So for you, number 16 is the, is the key to number it 1 to 17. It is key. It is key. Allow okay. me to add something. Okay. Um, I also think that in addition to what my colleague has just said, mm -hmm. partnerships are very important mm -hmm. if we are to achieve these goals. Mm -hmm. Because um, if one person is working on good health and well-being, another person is working on climate action, mm -hmm. and you're also working on strong institutions, we need to work together uh, as a team so that our outcomes uh, are able to contribute uh, to a common pool of sustainable development. Myself, I have been... Uh, working on good health, mm -hmm. quality education, gender equality, and partnerships for a long time. Mm -hmm. And specifically for adolescents and young people. Mm -hmm. And you realize that in our policy environment, we have policies that exist. Mm -hmm. However, the problem is implementation. Mm -hmm. Whether they are actually implemented on the ground. For example, for policies that concern adolescents and young people, we have... Um, the Adolescent Sexual Reproductive Health Policy of 2015 mm -hmm. and the National Guidelines for Provision of Youth-Friendly Services mm -hmm. in Health Facilities mm -hmm. and also the Constitution of Kenya 2010. Mm -hmm. So um, there are policies, but however the implementation on, on the ground is really wanting and we would like to urge um, uh, policy makers and people in government 
so that we can unite and work together. Because when we work together... Wait, we can we wait for the chairman to respond to that first okay. when it comes to the implementation? Where are we uh, going, Rob? Uh, I, I think uh, we, we must also appreciate that uh, we cannot achieve all this in, in a day. Mm -hmm. It is a process. Mm -hmm. and achieving all that we want may take time. But the most important thing is that are we on the, the, the right track to, to be able to implement this or to have policy. Mm -hmm. And the National Youth Council has been working on a youth policy. You know, this country have been, uh, has not been able to have a youth policy for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And that is why we've been uh, reviewing the National youth, Can uh, youth Council policy. There have also been getting views from the young people all over the country. Mm -hmm. from from last year mm -hmm. a, and that will be in place uh, very soon mm -hmm. uh, it's only waiting some some ascent mm -hmm. uh, so that is that is a step towards having a policy mm -hmm. but we also realize that uh, there are policies that are beyond national youth council what the national youth council can do is also to support or air the voice of young people mm -hmm. on particular particular policy mm -hmm. that affect young people and that that is the role of the national youth council mm -hmm just to inform uh, or be able to do a research and say that this policy would affect young people in this particular way. Mm -hmm. And so this is our opinion how this policy needs to be, to be handled. Just to appreciate what he just said, mm -hmm. I participated in the review of the National Youth Policy, mm -hmm. giving input towards what we would like to be included in the uh, new one. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think we are making progress towards the right direction. Mm -hmm. And I'd also like to urge young people at home. Mm -hmm. um, take the initiative of participating in activities that will contribute to shaping our future. For example, when we hear calls to participate in the um, CIDPs mm -hmm. and uh, to the review of policies, mm -hmm. let's turn up and give our views so mm -hmm. that we make sure that our voices are heard. And then for our leaders and the people who are supposed to implement policies, mm -hmm. we urge them all to make sure that they are fully implemented so that they benefit the people as stated in the policies okay let before before we call, oh you, people want to comment about this please can we make it real quick that we can talk about something really important which is sdg number three all right okay thank you um mm -hmm. i'd like to address the point that we need the institutions need to implement it mm -hmm. i'd like to say i think i as a kenyan mm -hmm. i as a citizen i need to take the first step mm -hmm. for example if we're dealing with climate change sdg 13 mm -hmm. What am I doing in my own compound? Mm -hmm. What am I doing in my own immediate um, mm -hmm. community? Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, like right now we have rains. Mm -hmm. How many trees are you planting? Mm -hmm. How many trees are you actually growing, not only planting? Mm -hmm. What are you doing to teach your next generation on the culture mm -hmm. of actually preserving the climate? Mm -hmm. What are you doing to pass this information to your next generation? So I think it starts with I as the individual mm -hmm. and then support the government because we people okay so we need to support the government the institutions in place mm -hmm. for us to actually move all right yes. jennifer you had something to say yeah uh, just to add on what she said mm -hmm. um i believe that um sdgs are not abstract mm -hmm. they're not um these things that are up there in the sky that we need to reach out to mm -hmm. sdgs are contributed to by the activities we do each and every day yes. and there's been a movement um mm -hmm. across the globe mm -hmm. that identifies or seeks to uh, sensitize young people mm -hmm. that even if you're doing your small business mm -hmm. you're contributing to uh, sdg number 10. Mm -hmm. even if, even when you're doing um your small social entrepreneurship project, mm -hmm. you're, you're contributing to SDG number 16. Mm -hmm. So um, it, they're not abstract. They're mm -hmm. not this um, beautiful, fancy UN goals. Mm -hmm. They are things that um, we actually contribute to every day. We're already doing it. Mm -hmm. We just need to be aware. Mm -hmm what are the targets mm -hmm. how can i improve on them you mm -hmm. know and it's important let's know the statistics let's know that for example 20 percent mm -hmm. or one in every 10 people for example mm -hmm. uh, live live below is it two do one dollar a day mm -hmm. you know so um mm -hmm. realizing that actually knowing what you're working towards is what we need to do and it will also help us like emphasize and you know add an oomph to what we're doing I like that. Add an oomph to what we're doing. We do it every day and I'm hearing that's what you're saying. What are you doing in your own family, in your own compound? And that's it. And that's how we'll be able to change even what we are facing when it comes to the climate. So be before we, uh, because I don't want us to dwell there, I really want us to talk about good health and well-being, which is SDG number three. You're very passionate about that. Can we please hear from you? I'm quite passionate about good health and well-being mm -hmm. because I believe that Mental health is a key factor in the overall well-being of an individual. Mm -hmm. 
it all starts in, in your brain, mm -hmm. yeah? I'm a nutritionist. I believe in good health. I believe in eating right. I believe in exercise. But as long as my mind is not where it's not a check, then I'm not healthy. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's a, it's a message that we need to take it out there. Mm -hmm. We need to create awareness. Depression is real. It's happening, especially our, among us, our young people. Mm -hmm. And we live in a society where depression is seen as a sign of weakness. Mm -hmm. You, and depression is such a silent, I, I like to call it a silent killer, mm -hmm. because it's so easy to say, Hilda, you, you've broken your arm, because I can see it, mm -hmm. but it's so hard to tell someone, I feel empty, I feel confused, mm -hmm. I don't know what is going on. Someone will just tell you, you know what, you need to snap out of it, mm -hmm. you need to stop being a big baby, and you need to compose yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's happening because, one, unemployment. Mm -hmm. Youths are frustrated. We are out here, we've graduated with good grades, but then we are going, you're working with your CVs every day. We are not getting employment. So we need to, <coughs> as much as we are creating awareness, we are talking about, we are talking about mental health. Mm -hmm. We need to come up with the right intervention to make sure that we completely curb this, this illness called depression, um, especially among us, our, 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 our youths. Let's have zero cases of suicide mm -hmm. you know let's talk about it all, all i'm asking for the youth it's j let's just talk about it. it's okay to not be okay it's yeah. okay to not be okay all right kevin well on uh huh the i, I mean i think as in just this, the way she's expressed <laughs> it uh <laughs> is uh is also so catchy mm -hmm. uh this is what probably i'll want to say about mental health mm -hmm. in regards to young people mm -hmm. you know uh i look back probably like five years uh, mm -hmm. on uh on myself five years ago uh where was i what was i doing what drove me kind of what used to push me what used to encourage me mm -hmm. did i suffer mental health I'm not really. I'm not really sure. Actually, that's a question I always ask myself on each and every day because uh, probably uh, maybe I suffered mental health. But the question I ask myself is, how did I overcome it? Mm -hmm. Because uh, you know, we all have problems, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But how do we handle our problems? Mm -hmm. uh, what encourages us to keep on pursuing? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's probably when I link it up to the quality of education. Uh, one of the key things I will really probably want to say in line with mental mm -hmm. health is, mm -hmm. are you self-aware about yourself? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that self-awareness mm -hmm. uh, of you as a Mm -hmm. That self-awareness of you as a person in mm -hmm. terms of whom you are mm -hmm. is actually really critical to young people mm -hmm. because we're always going to face, face challenges. But uh, when you face this particular challenge, it doesn't mean that you have to kill yourself. It doesn't mean that uh, you have to think suicidal, so uh, suicidal mm -hmm. thoughts. Mm -hmm. We're here, we're discussing issues. Yeah. Uh, I believe all of us probably here have kind of had some bits of uh, issues that have affected us. But mm -hmm. the key thing probably I, I would wish to hear also from each and every person within the room is mm -hmm. how did we overcome? Mm -hmm. Because uh, yes, uh, it's a different thing talking about mental health mm -hmm. but uh, uh, for me maybe on how I've overcome my challenges mm -hmm. uh, which I can testify is that particular belief of there is hope in tomorrow so if you can't build hope into yourself then uh, I think you can't overcome mental health that's basically what I can say I yes I please. would I would like to pick on something you've mentioned when it comes to our health and well-being the quality of education that we are receiving is also not uh, not really helping us when it comes to how we are dealing with our issues so can I hear someone comment on the quality of education that we have real quick because we are kind of running out of time so we need to be really quick with our comments Okay. Oh, chairman, you also so maybe, maybe I can comment on something also. There's an aspect of good health and well-being, mm -hmm. which is called sexual health for young people. Young people now, I know you have population. taken us to sexual health when you were talking about I'm briefly it. highlighting on that. Okay. Uh, because it's very important that uh, young people uh, are able to receive also complete physical, emotional, and mental well-being, mm -hmm. because that's an aspect of good health. Mm -hmm. um, um, We've seen rates of teenage pregnancies rise in the country, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and I feel like it is very important that we come together as religious leaders, the ministries of education, ministry of health, um, young people, teachers, parents, so that we deliberate, we find a way of uh, making sure that young people access quality reproductive health. Okay, please, Chairman, can we hear what you have to say about the education? Well, uh, I, I want to believe that we have good, if not the best, uh, 
uh, education policy or system within the country oh, wow. or within the region. <laughs> you uh, think so? I, I, I think <coughs> we have a good system. Mm -hmm. uh, it's only that uh, we, we value too much education than looking at how much do we invest in ourselves. You see, education is not just going to school. Mm -hmm. We're also looking at how much the system that you have contribute to, to the well-being. If you're going to do engineering, how much are you told about the other life issues than just doing having the engineering course or you doing the units that touch on engineering? Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think we just need to include some of uh, the real life because you, you also look at today in uh, uh, young people are sharing a lot on, on, on social media that is not supposed to be shared out. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not saying there's a limit of what you can share, mm -hmm. but you see that we, are, we have young people who are very fragile. Mm -hmm. They are going through a lot that uh, they would want to share everything. So I just want to believe that uh, there are some components that we also need to include. Mm -hmm. Component of life skill. Life skill is not supposed to just be live, uh, to, to be taught in primary mm -hmm. level and then we live, uh, we feel that mm -hmm. youth at the university level are not supposed to be taught life skills. Mm -hmm. They're also supposed to be beneficiary of life skills. Mm -hmm. But let me, let me also say that when we talk about sustainable development goal, the concept here is sustainability. Mm. And so how do we sustain the goal, is the issue, as, as we talk about all this? That, that is the reason why I say, we, let us look at the symptom. Why are young people committing suicide? Why are young people going under through mental health mm -hmm. or mental issues? Mm -hmm. Probably they, they are not able to get something to do after, go, after attending uh, university for all five years, six years. Mm -hmm. They're just at home. Probably they are not able to feed their families after having some babies. You, when you have a baby, you have the responsibility that you feel you must provide. Mm -hmm. And so you, when you're compelled with such issues, mm -hmm. uh, some, some of us will go uh, under through what we call the, the problem of mental health. Mm -hmm. And let us then look at why are young people going through such problem. Mm -hmm. And then when we are able to treat that, we are good to go. All right, all right. Now we can hear some response. So the lady at the back who really wanted to say something. Please, can we give her an opportunity? I wanted to say that everything here comes back to accountability. Mm -hmm. And accountability is not just about funds, being mm -hmm. accountable about funds. When you talk about SDG mm -hmm. uh, and uh, mental health and mm -hmm. uh, zero hunger, mm -hmm. are you accountable for yourself as mm -hmm. a person? Mm -hmm. Do you know that? Are you accountable for yourself as a mentally mm -hmm. as a person? Mm -hmm. <coughs> because if you if you say that you want to wake up today and make sure that your mental health is fine mm -hmm. then you have to know what what you need to do mm -hmm. you know you have to know how to how you to, you overcome things mm -hmm. so i think all of these things the 17 of them mm -hmm. go back to accountability mm -hmm. yeah on an individual basis yeah, on an individual basis all right jennifer i don't want you to leave without talking about something which is the uh, the when it comes to institutions here in kenya we've had the issue of the, uh, the huduma number mm. and um I know people are very excited about that. And um, uh, recently, the other day, we had a rumor that it was hacked and what. And then we have, okay, fine, we're developing new technology and what have you. But how safe is our data, you know? Yes. Okay. Um, the issue of Huduma number, I'll first start by a disclaimer. Um, I think the CS, CS Matangi, uh, yes. gave, gave a report and stated that uh, the... The, the leak that we had, that mm -hmm. there was a UON student, one of our comrades, <laughs> that had, leaked, <laughs> that had uh, hacked the system, mm -hmm. um, is untrue. Mm -hmm. I would stand by that because mm -hmm. I am not, uh, I'm not privy to the hacking and whatnot. Mm -hmm. However, um, as it stands, we don't have a data protection law, oh. to be honest. From a legal perspective, we mm -hmm. don't have a data protection law. Mm -hmm. All we have is a constitution and we have a data protection policy. Mm -hmm. The constitution provides for the right to privacy, mm -hmm. it provides for the, for the right to privacy, and then there's a data protection policy that now speaks to the bill that has been uh, presented. So there's a draft bill oh. that talks about mm -hmm. data protection, mm -hmm. that um, if a private institution or a government institution has access to your data, there are rights that you have, mm -hmm. you know, for, for that data are not to be leaked or transferred <laughs> to mm -hmm. third parties. Mm -hmm. So until that um, particular bill is passed and it's uh, assented to and becomes an act, then uh, some of the things that are in that bill, we can't mm -hmm. enjoy them yet. However, 
the case of Huduma Namba, mm -hmm. I need to understand um, that um, it is not blockchain based, mm -hmm. but um, it is actually a safe system that the government has developed to harmonize and to, to actually bring together all these multifaceted and fragmented uh, government services we usually have. Mm -hmm. So it's a one-stop shop. In fact, they are, they are calling it the, t the, one, the, so the one source truth of citizenship. Mm -hmm. and if you have that, one, that number, you're able to access NHIF, you're able to access all other government services. Mm -hmm. Now, I might have my reservations on that because mm -hmm. I believe um, maybe there are other things we would have done to, 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 to actually solve some of the biggest issues we have, mm -hmm. maybe corruption, you know, or um, revenue allocation, mm -hmm. electoral uh, reform, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the things that we could have done to do that, but I think one step at a time. So um, I'm told that so far we have 12.5 million Kenyans who have already registered. Mm -hmm. It's a good front. It means Kenyans are usually very supportive. When we banned plastic bags, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't even have complaints. Mm -hmm. I mean, it took a short time for Kenyans to transition. Kenyans are goodwilled. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether our leaders see that. That they introduce... Do we have good will? Uh -huh. Kenyans are good will. Uh -huh. We introduced a plastic ban and people complied. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we've, they've introduced NIMS and, and Hudumanam and people are registering. Mm -hmm. We have 12.5 million people who've registered. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if that good will can be rewarded with actual good governance, I think I would be happy. You know, oh. if we can be rewarded. I mean, people are registering. People are believing mm -hmm. that this can be a good platform for actually accessing government services. Mm -hmm. You know, then why, then, I mean, these are the things that pain me. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I, I, wish, I wish our leaders would see this. Mm -hmm. See that every time they come up with something good, Kenyans respond very fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So I'd like can to hear... Can oh, I, okay. Can I just say something? Uh, all right. Well, well, personally, um, I'm not very enthusiastic about the Uluma number. Okay. Uh, my, my reasons are that we, I don't think it was much of priority. Mm -hmm. we, we are just going to a censor in the month of August mm -hmm. that we will still spend a lot of money. Mm. In Odumba number alone, we've, uh, the, the government budgeted for about $6 billion mm -hmm. to just do this. Mm -hmm. And so we're spending this, and then we are going to spend another, probably another six billion, mm -hmm. to just do a sensor, mm -hmm. which to me are one of the one and the same thing mm -hmm. to, to be able to do. And and so sometimes our priorities are not right. And and, and that that is my reservation. Although there there's, there have been some issues uh, that will do my number. Uh, are not protected, have been hacked, and then we also find that uh, those who are providing mm -hmm. the services mm -hmm. were also discontinued, or, so I don't know what happened <laughs> to the data now. Uh -huh. uh, you, you also remember the, the, the company. Mm -hmm. what, what was the name of the company? Mm -hmm. MB Morpho. Yes. Uh, so the, the parliament was saying that they, they've terminated the contract, mm -hmm. but the exercise is still going on. Mm -hmm. So you, you might not even understand some what is going on exactly, mm -hmm. because if I'm providing, uh, I'm giving you the data and my services are stopped, mm -hmm. and something is still going on, mm -hmm. you, you don't even know what is going on. I, I'm only really faulting them on priority. Mm -hmm. For me, it's not a priority. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I'd like to defer with my colleague, uh, because the national census takes more data than um, that personal information system mm -hmm. is supposed to uh, be uh, an anchor to getting government uh, services. Mm -hmm. Now, the national census process mm -hmm. gets way more information than just, than just personal data mm -hmm. from the property that you own. Mm -hmm. to, there's so much that's, that goes into, mm -hmm. into, the, uh, into the process that's done by the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. Mm -hmm. So while our priorities as a country might be wrong, I believe that um, we are, it's a good start. Let's, for once, let's tell hope. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we come on air every day and complain how uh, there are bad things happening, how whatnot. But for once, let's tell hope. Let's tell hope. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Chairman, you that, 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 exactly that is exactly <laughs> where we go wrong. All right. Because if we cannot say when something is not right, because yeah, we just want to tell hope. But let, let, let me also say, if I was coming to collect her information. No, 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 no. We are not going to start a whole debate here. Kevin, right, right Kevin. Right all right then. Uh, Thank you. Selling hope, yes, perfect. We need to sell hope. Um, I'm always concerned when uh, we come on air and we don't localize our content. When I talk about localizing our content is, we're talking Huduma number, we're talking sensors. But in my mind, even 
to achieve these particular 17 goals that we talk about SDGs, I always look at the person within the rural area setups. Mm -hmm. Are we talking 6 billion in terms of implementation for the Uduma number, the 6 billion in terms of sensors? And there's one thing that I'm a believer of, uh, and that is uh, how best can we accelerate mm -hmm. uh, technology to rural areas mm -hmm. as a driver to development. Okay. In that, in, in that uh, you see, we're talking no poverty, mm -hmm. uh, we're talking no zero to hunger, we're talking good health and yeah. all. And mm -hmm. a big percentage of our Kenyan population resides on rural area setups. Mm -hmm. And one of the only things they lack is information. Mm -hmm. And a, 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 a basic way of uh, even accelerating information for them to be aware about justice systems mm -hmm. uh, on how Kenya operates is by just an example, always says, how best can we set up tech? hub centers mm -hmm. within the rural area setups mm -hmm. because as the end I know yes time is up mm -hmm. and I always give this basic example mm -hmm. a mechanic in Nairobi mm -hmm. who has accessed a laptop mm -hmm. will come to diagnose a car mm -hmm. uh, will come to diagnose someone's car mm -hmm. using a laptop right mm -hmm. a mechanic in the rural area setup for example probably in Imbo where I stay up mm -hmm. in will come to diagnose a car using a spanner. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only thing that lacks across the two of them is not even just education, mm -hmm. but just as in that basic access mm -hmm. to probably a digital skill, mm -hmm. or rather to just that tech hub center that will make him access <coughs> information, mm -hmm. uh, or, or the same information that this particular person is accessing within Nairobi. All and that right. to me, probably, I believe is a key driver to just ensure SDGs are safe. Localize it. Localize, Localize it. it the most Spread simplest. the information. Yeah, yeah, that is exactly why I wanted Jennifer here to, to tell us about to do my number because there are many people and there are many young people who also don't really know exactly how it works me included so it was good for us to know like what's happening but anyway you guys it's about time we wind up um thank you guys so much for making time to be here today and um, i hope next week i'll still have some of you here with me asante sana oh, national thanks. youth council thank, thank you, you so much mr roy sasaki as well the ceo of the national youth council thank you so much for your support and yes this has been another segment of youth and politics my name is hilda wadivi jennifer thank you Thank you. Thank you, Arnold. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> All right, so please don't go away. You're watching me in the morning to Kutani next week. Peace.